welcome to the Nanny Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as Nanny Samurai. This is episode 47, Sunrise Take Two. So, our part. <laughs> um, it is Sunday, March 10th, I'm going to say. It's funny, I have to know the day during the week for a lot of what I do, and then the weekend comes and I'm like, ah. It is, so we just changed the time, and I'm already an early riser, just naturally, and we have a big full day ahead of us today, and so I thought, if I don't sit down and record right now before he gets up, I'm not going to get to do it, because he's probably going to nap in the car while we're driving from point A to point B, so, uh, yeah, hi, how are you? <laughs> I've been a crazy knitting lady this past week, as you're, as you'll see as I go through it, um, so, happy news. I am right now wearing my Dark and Stormy. Blocking is magic. <laughs> so, I soaked it for the better part of the day. Just wanted to make sure that all the fibers got really saturated. Spun it out in my washing machine. Half spun it out. So, there was still some moisture in it. And then I went to pin it out. And, you know, I put a towel down and I went to pin it out and realized that Oh my god, all the bunchiness is gone. Like, it's perfectly fine. So, I don't know if something around my increases was just a little too tight at that time and it needed to relax, but I seriously shook it, laid it down, and I did pin the two front, the button band at the bottom, the ribbing. I did pin that down, two pins, that was it. And it came out awesome. That's my go band going for a walk. So I'm, I'm psyched. I then took it to my LYS and she helped me. I actually picked them out. But you know, it's like, it's a store. So she carries the yarn. She makes sure she has buttons that match. So I picked out these really, really heavy, pewter, solid, substantial, hammered looking buttons that are really dark, but then they have a little bit of light. Okay. Not the coffee. And, um, they just pick up the depth of color within the sweater. I've sewn one on, the bottom one, and then little hands came over and, because I was standing at the counter, doing it there so it was nice and flat and I could see, and uh, little hands came over and so I had to stop. So the bottom one's sewn on, and I can't really show you that, but the rest of it's held with bobby pins right now. But I will fix it before the day is out because I cannot wait to wear this. I'm so excited. It's like the happy ending at the end of the sweater story. Oh! <laughs> And, yeah, I'm trying to think what else is going on with us. Um, quiet week. Not too much happening here. Roland turned a year and a half this past whatever. I don't know. On the third, he turned a year and a half. And so he's moving up to the next level at school, at daycare. He goes three days a week. And so I went one night after work and met the teacher and saw the room and talked about the schedule and eating and oh my god there's so much more activity so I'm really excited for him that every day is just going to be fun crazy run around but at the same time I'm just like oh, oh you mean nap is later oh and there's you know everybody walks and runs in this room and I mean he's clearly much larger than everyone else in his room because he's the oldest and uh, yeah on the curve he's like almost off the normal growth chart so he's a big dude so, oh my little guy yeah and we went for a walk yesterday I'll probably put in this video I think we went for a walk yesterday and um, there are lots of dogs in the neighborhood and we don't have a dog we just have the two boys and whenever he sees a dog he starts saying ruff 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 or arf either one he'll alternate and so he saw this little dog, and he starts, he speeds up, and he's going after a little terrier, a white terrier. And ruff, 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 ruff. And as we get closer, he's, you know, making all his noise, and he's all excited, and then he stops and looks at me, and he's like, pick me up. <laughs> so I pick him up, and as we get even closer, I don't know if he knew the dog, because he and Steve walk a lot more than he and I walk. Uh, as we got closer, the dog exploded with barking, like, lots of little yeps. 
and the arm was like, oh, he's fine, and, the, and I was just like, okay, and so we stopped, and we talked to Sam, Sam's the dog, and it was really funny, because Roland, he's all about it, and then he gets there, and he gets shy, and then as we're walking away, over my shoulder, bye, and he's blowing kisses to the dog, so it was, it was very cute. What do you think? That's a man. Uh, uh. Yes, there's a man down there. Does he have a puppy? <laughs> he does have a doggy. <laughs> What's the doggy say? <laughs> I think the doggy says. What's the doggy say? <laughs> you walk it backwards? But I think that's enough babble. I have four stitches left on this row, which was my goal to get to the end of the row so we could talk about it. Um, but we're gonna hold this for later. I know. I know you're like, what is that dark mass you were knitting on? I'm not gonna tell you just now. What I am gonna start off with is my stack of things, a sip of coffee. This mug is a Christmas mug. I can't part with it. I know I should have put it away by now, but I love how tall it is. It's perfect for my iced coffee. So, um, I've been knitting socks. I'm almost done. I don't even want to show you. Here's a peek, okay? I've cast off one, off the needles. I have like half an inch to go on the other. Not, not, not done. I cast on a new pair of socks, which is, the color is called Blue Striped Rag. So, it's a patents, another patents color. Remember, I was going to knit these from my grandmother. So you can see it. Um, and that's what I have so far. Just a wee little toe. Just a little toe. Yeah. So, my family, we call grandmother's mime. And, um, it was really funny. Yesterday, Roland and I were wandering around in Toys R Us. Babies R Us? Babies R Us. They sell the veggie packets that he likes to eat for the best price. And uh, we went to look at the clearance clothes. And anyways, there was a, like a six-year-old running around. He had younger siblings with his mother. And he had his grandmother with him. And he was saying, Mame, Mame, look at this. Mame, Mame. And you ne I never hear Mame down where we live. Like six hours north of here. Sure, I'd hear it all the time. But not around here. So it just made me smile. It was like, hey, Roland, he has a Mame too, not just you. <laughs> So, you know I Love the Island by Jane Richmond. There were 85 patterns, no, there were five patterns in here, and I swore up and down I wanted to knit them all. Well, except the scarf, I'm not a scarf knitter. I'm trying to find you a picture. And this past week, I started the Socks That Rock Knit Along. There we go. And the pattern I wanted to use for that is the Arbutus. That one right there, it's this really awesome cowl. I love the way it looks. And so I wanted to use some of my medium weight socks that rock <coughs> for this. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, yeah, it didn't come out so great. So I pulled out some grasshopper that I had purchased at Ryan Beck this past year. I really love this color. It's this great semi solid variegated green blue color. And I started knitting. And I knit for probably an hour. Had about that much and realized, ah, so many mistakes. So, And I know it's garter, and they probably wouldn't have shown, but I knew they were there and they're pissing me off. <gasps> Foul language. So I frogged. Cast on again. Started again. Okay, here we go. And now I had gone down one needle size. So I think the pattern calls for eights, and I was knitting with sevens or something. Do you really want to know? Is it that important? I guess it just takes a second. Yeah, it calls for eights, and I was knitting with sevens. Didn't seem like a big, big switch to me. But I am using a fingering weight. Uh, no, probably a DK instead of a worsted. Didn't seem that far off. So I'm going, going, going. I have made so many mistakes in this. For a simple pattern, it's ridiculous. I don't know. For some reason, I couldn't memorize it. The There's short rows in it. There's wrapping and turning that I don't really like the look of. I didn't get comfortable with the way that edge looked. I just, 
So I made it this far through the top tier, cast on for the second tier, got going, and realized that is very narrow. Do I put it on? Well, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. That is very narrow, and I didn't think, it's not bad actually, it would <clears throat> give me the look I wanted, and plus this was narrow, and it just seemed all wrong. So I put it aside so I could show you guys. See, I did get progress, and I had this, so this is my second take on it. Um, I pulled out some of my <clears throat> stash yarn, which is, which was, uh, I don't have it written down. I believe it's Reynolds Cricut. It was a 50-50 wool rayon blend, and it's very shiny yarn, can you see? And I cast it on using size 8, the appropriate size needle, and I just went to town. And this is how it came out. So it's a very drapey little cowl. Um, I already wore it to work, and the accessories buying team went nuts over it because it's just such a cool idea. As the way to make, to get that layered cowl look, but then, a layered scarf look, but it uses so much less fabric. Like, this is 200 yards, I think, 200 a little bit. So, really quick knit. Pattern is a bit just like, ugh. I almost wish I had done um, a, I don't know if even a test run, a small stitch test run would have helped me figure it out. Like, I just, it's, and it's nothing to do with a pattern. It was just my brain could not wrap itself around, okay, what am I doing there? How? What? Backwards, forwards? So probably by the point I got to, by the time I got to the second tier, I finally got it. But when you think about it, I had knit more than one at that point. So I love it. Um, very drapey, very pretty. I'm probably going to knit 85 million of these. Yes, no less than 85 million. That's, that's the number I'm shooting for. So hold me to that. <laughs> um, I need to have some, a few more of my friends see me wearing it and see their reaction to it. But I could definitely knit a Christmas gift for all my coworkers if I wanted to because they just thought it was the bomb. So, um, yeah. I'm not going to finish this. Right? Because see how short the other one was? Yeah. No. I'm not going to finish it. But at least I put it on so I can see what it looks like <laughs> before I frog it. Um, that reminds me. You know I love Shutterfly. They make reusable shopping bags. So you do a picture layout and they print it up and it's a huge great little tote bag. So I did one with pictures from Winter Storm Nemo of Roland and Steve and I outside playing. So I really love Shutterfly. Public service in this one, I think. And then just quick flasher, flasher unloved project. I've been working on the Peasy by Heidi Karamar and um, not really. It's such a pretty color though. Maybe I just needed to take it out and look at it and be reminded. It is very pretty and it's going to be a really nice dense knit. I'm getting hot. This is a lot of wool in my person. Um, yeah, so it's, I'm not that far along. I'm a little worried to be honest about this project that it's doomed because this is the fun part of the knitting. This is the shorter part of the yoke, so it's just getting bigger, right? Top down raglan. And I don't have a lot of motivation, so if it, things are like this now, what am I going to do when I get to the big yoke rows? And what am I going to do when it's, I mean, straight stuck in that's fine. Um, US size 6 needles. US size 6 needles. 4.0 millimeter. I'm using my signatures because it's another opportunity to, but honestly, I really don't like this cord. Everything sticks to the cord. I have, I'm, my motion of moving the stitches along down the cord to get them to the tip is much more exaggerated compared to the motion on my smooth, on my everyday tried and true knit picks cable. Um, it really irritates me. <laughs> I needed sixes for something, so I moved this onto the signature and that's, I think, when I, I stopped knitting on it almost. Like, it's just really slow and I don't know. I don't know. I talked to Melissa, Melia Bella, about it and just said, you know, I know I'm knitting this for your, your knit along, but unless it's a six month knit along, I don't see me finishing. 
Let's see. I say that. I make these grandiose pronouncements, 85 million, and then do the exact opposite. So, who knows, next week I could get my butt in gear and have, you know, be split off for the sleeves by this time. Probably not, because there's another sweater that's taking all of my attention as of late. So, um, let me share. Again, Jane Richmond in Island. The, one of the other patterns in here that I was wild about was the grace. So it is the sweater pattern. Now, again, I don't think Jane Richmond's brain and my brain think it all alike. <laughs> because another you know, perfectly fine pattern written should be able to follow it. I am a somewhat advanced knitter. And instead, of being able to execute, I made, again, a billion mistakes. Am I going to tell you about them? Okay, I'll tell you about a few. I'll tell you the obvious ones. So, the gauge on this <clears throat> is um, US size 4, 3.5 millimeter needles. Gauge, gauge, gauge. Well, that tells you enough, right? US size 4 with a fingering weight yarn is what this sweater calls for. I don't even know how I got to knitting this because I started off saying I want to use some of my oldest stash yarn and so this is in one of those goals for the year for me. This is New Tweed Discontinued Yarn, 70% Merino, 15 Silk, 11 Cotton, and 4% Viscose. It's, I've shown it to you before, it's this um, olive green with teal and salmon pops in it of tweeting. That's what the viscose is. And uh, worsted weight gauge is recommended for an, a size 8. Somehow I decided that I would use this yarn to knit a fingering weight sweater. <sighs> Heaven help me. Um, so right off the bat, I thought I would use go down a needle size and knit it on size 7s. Except I wasn't paying close enough attention to my gauge, which a lot of the sizing is worn off on my Scassell gauge, which is my favorite gauge. And so, because it works for the, it, the, it recognizes the ones very well. I've had other gauges that don't distinguish between a one, whatever the two sizes of ones are and the two sizes of twos. This Cassell one handles it in a way that it makes sense to me. Anyways, I cast on on size eights. So I tend to be a loose knitter. I almost always go down in needle size. First ups, whoops. I cast on, I'm following along, I've got the pattern in the book and I've got the good reader and it's a fill in the blank type pattern with a chart and you bring over your numbers for your size. Great! There's no highlighting, you just have to fill in your numbers. I've got good reader, I can fill in my numbers, I'm fine. So I'm going along doing that, cast on right off the bat. Yeah. The, I don't know if you noticed, the lace on that is sort of it's offset. It's a two row lace. I don't think I'm giving too much away. I, my brain wouldn't let me. How about that? My brain wouldn't let me knit it the way it was supposed to be. And instead, I lined it up. I, yeah, so it's supposed to be sort of an offset lace, so there are just holes. It's still geometric, but they don't fall along these diagonal lines the way I've done it. How about that? So, I was reading the pattern, it wasn't making sense, it wasn't making sense. I looked at my knitting, I read my knitting all the time to tell me where I am and what I'm doing. Oh, I know what to do, and so I just took off going that way. Second mistake. <laughs> the increases on the sleeves are supposed to be placed both sides of one stitch. And I realize that now, having knit several rows and looking at my work, but I didn't realize that when I started and it. I couldn't follow what she was saying, so some of my increases are too wide. So like this one, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but that's two stitches right in here, okay, in between the increases. And then others are one wide, one stitch in between. Now normally this is insane because Stephanie is not the type of person that can handle flaws of any kind see the three attempts on arbutus because my garter stitch cowl that no one is going to look that closely on was off a stitch here and it looked a little messy and I could totally fix it with you know a little hand stitching afterwards but no 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 rip it out sort of again um yeah 
So that's the third mistake, and and I could deal with it if it were the two back and the two front. No. So this one has two wide, this one has one wide. I'm letting it go. I'm so excited about knitting this sweater that, pfft, screw it, I'm still going. No one's going to notice, or at least only a knitter will notice, and I don't know that many knitters on a daily basis that will see me wearing this sweater. <laughs> and looking at my closet, like right now, my, my hand knits are in a rotation of about once a month between all of the sweaters I have. So, yeah, I just won't wear this around knitters. Or maybe I will to see if they notice. <laughs> so, here is my Grace with worsted weight yarn. I uh, did a, a stitch, I measured my gauge, which I love. I'm kind of in love with the top down raglans, in case you can't tell as a light, because you can measure your gauge on the sleeves and you're still making progress forward without knitting a gauge swatch, which is part of what annoys me about a gauge swatch. So once I got my, I mean, I eyeballed it and what I thought according to the label my gauge would be and then I followed that size on the pattern um, that followed the stitches that added up to the right chest circumference and then measured my gauge and adjusted. I actually had to because now I know, because I was using an 8 and not a 7, that I needed to adjust down even one more size to get the right stitch count. So even though <clears throat> I'm trying to get a 47 inch bust, say, I'm knitting the size 40 in the pattern and crossing my fingers it comes out. I've tried, I'm not going to try it on right now, but I have put it on several times and it's, um, it fits perfect. It's doing fine. I think I have a few extras. I could probably decrease a few stitches out of the minus, um, out of the chest. Like it's still kind of big, but once I get going, the waist waist decreases are coming soon enough. And after I do that and put it on, I'll see. It was hard to gauge. <clears throat> it was hard to gauge. No, it was hard to tell where I was at when it was. Um, because last time I put it on, I just had the lace finished, and so it was all curly and funky. So I'm about, uh, I'd say two inches down from the lace. So I, from the, the lace ends when you split for the armhole. So I am flying along. I have ten skeins of this yarn at a hundred yards each. So I'm moving at a clip. I've, I'm finishing my third skein right now. I should finish it early today. So. I'm just so excited. 30% through a sweater in less than a week. Are you serious? Are you paying attention? That's insane. So I'm going to do the body. No, I'm going to finish this skein and then I'm going to cast on for the sleeves and hook one ball to each sleeve. And then that will leave me five skeins, 500 yards to finish the rest of the body. I'm sure that's enough. And the sleeves are going to be whatever length they're going to be with 100 yards. Like I'm not on size eight which I think will be at least, you know, there. So it is moving along. I'm so excited. I can't wait to wear it. Oh, can you believe all this sweater knitting? Like Steve and I were talking about it the other day. This is like, who am I? I seriously, before October of this year, I would knit one sweater a year. Since October, I have knit, the, how many? Three? Yes, Pipeline, Harvest Moon, dark and stormy and I have two more that are making at least one more that's making substantial quick progress so year of the sweater no but my goal was to knit 13 sweaters this year and I would like them not all to be baby sweaters <laughs> oh found out someone else at work is pregnant so there are now needing to be three baby items so that's exciting for me um, I did block out my pie shawl and that edge does roll a little bit but I could iron it, I suppose. I don't think I'm going to iron it. <laughs> but, um, oh, in the mail, new this week, I have some things to share with you. I don't even know how I got to this website. Was it Diane? It might have been Diane of Minimal's talking. But, um, Inspiration Dye Works. I am in love. Completely in love. I cannot wait to knit with this. So this is her Walking After Midnight colorway. It is a gorgeous blue navy, um, green, like forest green, and then some mustard color in there, but very subtle. It's so beautiful. 
I cannot. Oh, I didn't show you my pebble beanie. Okay, show you that after. <laughs> I cannot underestimate, or I cannot tell you how beautiful this, this yarn is. It's gorgeous. It's a four ply fingering, 75 merino, 25 nylon, 460 yards, and I think it was ridiculously inexpensive for a hand dyed. Like, go check it out. That's uh, Inspiration Dye Works. Actually, this is a better one to show you. And I had left this in the box, but now I'm gonna take it out. Because, so this one is, I believe, it's a, I know it's a three color stripe. She does that, it's called Gothic Sock. Same thing, same yarn content. And that's a red, you know, basic primary color, red, purple, and black stripe. So, gorgeous. Socks for me. Socks for me. Maybe they want to be monkeys. I haven't knit monkeys in a while. I'm thinking I need to. I was just like, that was me searching the brain for who's knitting monkey socks right now. But, um, anyways. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So, that came in the mail this week. And then, um... You can also look for, I haven't, I can't figure out what to do. Can you help me? Um, I have this Not Drinking Merlot by Nitty and Color for the two twisted skeins, two tangled skeins, knit along. That's for March, and I haven't cast it on yet. I know. Um, I'm not really sure what to do with it. I might, actually, I am kind of thinking. I do have an idea. Camera problems. <laughs> So yeah, I think I'm going to knit another arbit arbitus with this um, held double and go up a needle size. So it'll be pretty. Uh, it's a fairly quick knit, right? Um, and then I wanted to show you the pebble beanie. So I am using Schaefer Nicole in the, I really hope this is recording, <laughs> in the Empress Wu Wu Zhao colorway, and I have to tell you, I did a little research on her. I listened to the, well, first I read the wiki page on her, but then I listened to um, Stuff You Missed in History Class. It's an audio podcast that I've always loved. I go in and out. I don't listen to it that consistency, consistently, but it can be a great fill-in when you just need something sort of interesting, but not too, too involved. And they're one-off, um, just, you know, a little bit about history something you missed. <laughs> so I listened to that about her. She was the only female to rule as Empress of China in her own name, in her own right. Um, and she was a little ruthless. She possibly killed her own children just to frame someone else so that she could retain power. And I don't know that I'm a fan of her or that I would have used her as an inspiration, but they did, and it's funny because the pictures of her, the paintings of her up on Wiki don't have these colors, so I don't know how they matched it up, but they did. So, my Pebble Beanie from Weekend Knits, I want to say it's like Elizabeth Parker, I'm not sure, I'm not sure who designed it, but I finished the ribbing, stop whining about the ribbing, Stephanie, and got into the patterning section, and uh, I hope you can see it, it's so cool, I really like how it looks. And I knew I would. I knew I would. But I, um, I can only do like two rows of patterning. So it's a row of patterning, a row of resting, and then patterning again. I can only do about two before my fingers are like, because oh, of the tricky knitting togetherness that you have to do to, to accomplish that. Can you hear Steve blowing his nose? <laughs> So I think it's really nice. Um, I think it's going to be a really dense, warm hat. I know a couple people had asked about, they weren't sure about knitting a, a fingering weight hat and if it would be warm. It will be plenty warm. I would not want to do this in a heavier weight yarn. Although Nicole is more of a sport weight, if you ask me. Like it's a very heavy fingering weight yarn. So um, I will continue to have very slow progress on this hat and occasionally show it to you. So there you go. I forgot about it because I was knitting on it earlier in the week before Grace took hold and eliminated all rivalry. So, um, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you have a great 10 days or so until we talk again and enjoy what's going on in your knitting world. Take care. Bye.